Hello, thank you for joining me for some live trading. Um, you can see the trades I took this morning. Um, the first one, I closed on Palantir at 24.26, a position that I opened up last night, just before the closing bell of 500. Um, and the reason for that was I, I got it for basically 23.82 and a half a share. It was really down low. And I thought it would be a good swing trade. And it was. So before I even started anything this morning, I made $150 in this paper trading account. Um, and then later I traded AMC. As you can see, um, I bought a thousand shares at 804 and sold them shortly thereafter. About a minute and a half later for $7.99, I stopped out. I thought if it broke the $8 mark, um, it wouldn't have much hope. And then later, there was a good setup I liked, and I bought it at 12. I watched it flounder a bit, um, and then I said, you know what? I'm gonna flatten out. I saw it get up around the 8.20 mark, and then it floundered there a little bit. So I just, I got out. So basically I lost five cents a share here for a thousand shares and I made six cents a share here on two thousand shares for a net profit on the day for seventy dollars. I'll take it. That means two twenty so far on the day. Add that up to the previous days, you know, well the, the whole week actually. And this account has gone from see here it is again, now it's showing two hundred and two thousand. Sometimes that's a one, sometimes that's a two, but these numbers over here, see up here in the upper left corner, always stay the same. $2,587.65. This number was $669 on Monday. So up almost $2,000 on the week, as if I were trading a 100,000 account, which if I remember correctly, all the trades I took this week were less than like 25,000. So if I actually had a $25,000 and $1 account, you know, to get past the pattern day trading rule, I could have profited roughly uh, almost $2,000. It's about, about $100 short of that so far. 10%. And of course I recognize that's because this market has been super hot, but even on down days, if you, follow the rules, you know what you're doing, you can make money. drawings that they're no longer apply same here these things get old fast when uh, the mark is as active so the spider the S&P 500 has established a level we established the bottom here look like we had a, a head and shoulders that was rising you can see that easily. Dun, 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 head. You, you can call that a shoulder. You can call that a shoulder, actually. But unless this takes off from here. Honestly, though, I, thought I could probably. See, this is really. These people got filled here. We could probably scalp. Probably scalp this S and P 500. That's for sure. These are 15 minute bars, candlesticks right here.
you know, these people that watch this and then watch this and then saw this were hoping this was a double bottom. Bought in here and hopefully got out somewhere around here. These ones sunk fast though. Commenter's been riding the BWAP. So this is where I sold somewhere up here, 24 something. Oh, 2426. So all day today, besides where I sold, which you can see this little red arrow, that's where I sold. Um, it's basically been below that level, Palantir, PLTR. So it looks like I really um, timed that well. I was looking at the level two, I was watching what it was doing. And, um, and it did spike a little bit. I first it started here, sink a little bit, spiked. I don't remember why I didn't sell here and get afraid. But I think I was watching the level two. And um, you know, when you watch these things enough, basically just if you really want to get good at this, you sit your butt down in front of this monitor and you watch the market every day. I mean, maybe you try to guess what's going to happen, but you don't bet on it. And then you see stuff like this. And then one of the other things that I really like to do is change the time frames and see what it looks like, you know, on a five minute. Because there are different traders like different time frames. A one minute time frame is extremely aggressive for trading. this mouse huh <laughs> you see I'd say nine out of ten of these trades have made me money they're a little bit or a lot on this paper account and in fact um, I still own three shares of AMC it has the money I'm playing around with in my retirement account if you were paying attention earlier you knew that you, you heard this morning and several times in the past that my retirement account is um, basically my wife's account she's controlling it she's deciding what to watch what to buy what to hold so I don't mess with it for the most part but uh but I did put $50 in to play with. So I buy penny stocks and whatnot, do a little trading.
<clears throat> yeah, I knew I could have scalped this. Look at that. It just popped below VWAP for a minute. Set a, a nice little, you know, quadruple bottom. I may not make any trades this afternoon. What I'm really looking for is the short squeeze. And um, so far, it's enough for me to pay attention to maybe a couple of the other uh, live trading shows that I've sort of watched but don't really explain things the way that I'd like to see someone explain it. This is what I'm trying to do. And. Um, I promise you next week I will not be using this shaky little mouse. This level two has its use. Sometimes it's nice to be able to look down and see like a huge support, like say there was a hundred at 758 and then you'd be like okay well you can be pretty confident that it will at least pause at 758 if not stop and reverse like right now we see 24 at 789 so that's that's a little support but it disappears fast I mean look at that I mean, typically I just I don't waste my time on that I like this one because it summarizes everything okay we have 33 sellers here there may be I mean bidders here there may be uh, 5,000 at 763 that we don't see and like I said there's a it's nice to have that other level too but when you're like trading fast this is the one to use I'm a little disappointed that I didn't take the opportunity this morning when AMC got up to nine dollars to sell my shares in my retirement account um, but they hadn't exhausted their run as far as I thought it's a little different now though honestly it's below VWAP um, it's been trending down all day. But looks like it may be starting to trend up. Um, it's too soon to place any major bets on, say, but. There's at least a thousand other traders out there drawing these lines right now. It's 
see, we could have drawn it here to predict this. Could have drawn it there to predict that. Could have drawn it there. <laughs> Look at how this just correlates. Okay, could have drawn it there even to predict that. Could have drawn it here. Look at. All right. So let's see if it continues to be a good predictive. And of course, we also have. We can draw from here. We could literally go back here and trace the downtrend potentially from here. I can't get that line to continue. At some point I might figure that out. But let's focus. a scalp trade if you if you're really paying attention ideally I'd like to see that stop at that line This is a bull pennant, sort of.
amazing how it just stays in those lines. And the reason that works. Check. We're watching this thing get constrained into a narrower and narrower band. In fact, if you look here, just broke above okay so at this point we're gonna want to watch what it does if it manages to head north of 796 a lot of these dries don't matter anymore Isn't this a nice little wedge right here? I'm going to re redo my levels. a lot of barriers to this going but if it gets past 821 it has no resistance till 9 so that's a 79 cent move so we'll keep an eye on this one Thank you for joining me on Friday, February 26th, 2021. I'm trading live on YouTube for the express purpose of becoming a better trader. Um, 
Last week, I ended the week down like 3,500, some crazy amount. Um, I was, I had been up at one point by 5,500 uh, year to date on this paper trading account, which I um, am using for educational purposes. And I felt pretty good about it, but I made a couple of trades that were um, against my rules. They felt good at the time. I thought they were going to do good, and they didn't. I lost 80%. I was down uh, on Friday, last Friday, but I ended up with was $669 above the $100,000 mark in this particular uh, paper trading account. At that point, I asked myself if I was um, had just been lucky, or if I just was stupid and broke the rules too much. Now, in this market, this market is very forgiving. You can make a lot of mistakes and still make money, um, whether it's on paper or in your actual account. So much like. Uh, Back in 2001, when I thought I was a stock picking genius because, uh, you know, the market was recovering, was rebounding uh, from the internet crash. I, I made a lot of money in the stock market, not day trading, but just, you know, being an investor, so to speak. And then, of course, around 2002, I don't know exactly when. I try not to, you know, fixate on that, but the market stopped going up. And so that whole theory of, you know, a rising tide raises all ships stopped applying to me. And I realized that maybe I wasn't so smart after all, because my stocks flattened out. I lost big on at least one that I was betting big on. And when I say betting big, clearly if you don't know what you're doing. You're putting money into something hoping to get more money back, you're gambling. And that's what a lot of people do in the stock market. They think they know what they're doing. It looks pretty simple. Buy low, sell high. You know, who could, uh, who could go wrong there? But I'll be honest with you, just four simple rules in price action. Um, if you just follow four simple rules, you can't go wrong. Um, but you gotta watch the setups you gotta watch your uh... oh anyway as I was saying so I started this account or this um, well this YouTube account to go live in the hopes that I would be more conscious of my trades if I felt like someone was watching over my shoulder as in we all usually have a boss and if the boss is watching, we're prone to make less mistakes unless we're like a nervous type. But typically, um, if someone's watching what you're doing, you tend to be a little more careful about it because you don't want to look bad in front of them. So that's kind of the theory behind what I'm doing here. And so far, it seems like it's worked. I've been more responsible 90% of the time. If you go through my my you know, the last five days tapes, you're going to see um, maybe one or two spots where I wasn't strictly following the rules um, and I got lucky. which this market is very forgiving. It's not hard to get lucky. I'm still waiting for a spot here um, to sell the three shares I have in my retirement account. In order to do that, if it doesn't pass, Twelve. 
I lose some pennies. It's funny that I lose money in the only account that has real money. Well, not the only account. Actually, I think it is. I'd opened a few accounts um, a while back because my wife um, wanted to do some day trading. Or at least that's what I had interpreted from what she had told me. So I was all for it. I threw a couple hundred dollars and um, I opened a Weevil, uh, Robinhood, and a um, Interactive Brokers. In addition to putting, you know, about 500 into my uh, retirement account. And set her loose. And that was kind of cool. You know, it was nice to think that my wife had some interest. But, um, she's more of the buy and hold kind of person. And so the reason I had opened up so many accounts was because I thought that she might want to make, you know, trade like day trades. So I had like all these accounts. So each one has three day trades a week. So I was like, okay, baby. And at this point, at that time, back then, I wasn't interested in trading myself. But I knew the power of the stock market. I knew that she was an intelligent woman. So I figured if she took an interest in it, she could rock, potentially, you know. So I opened up all these accounts, put all this money in. And um, she didn't trade so what I had interpreted as a desire to day trade for her was a desire to be able to trade outside of um, normal hours you know she wanted to trade pre-market post-market and I had misinterpreted that so um, while she went ahead and did that I was you know, watching her picks she made some pretty good picks, but of course you're not going to get the kind of returns that you're going to expect from day trading when you're doing long-term trading. Um, so I ended up closing like three or four of those accounts. In fact, I think I closed them all. I don't think I have a Weeble, Robinhood, or Interactive Brokers account anymore. The, the only account um, she uses now is the uh, retirement account which suits me just fine because that's perfect for long term. So we're watching AMC and AMC just seems to be squeezing itself into a more narrower and narrower band. Let's look at this at the one minute. all these levels. I don't even know why we're looking at AMC except um, it's Friday. We're just waiting for the short squeeze on something. I have nine other stocks up. Um, what I probably would be doing if I wasn't live right now would be watching somebody else live <laughs> to see what they're doing. But you know, what I have right now is I'm, I'm looking at the the uh, Kelvara stock scanner, the free stock scanner on YouTube. And they have this one little column called Ready to Rip. Now, this AERI has been continuously showing up on there. So I want to see what that's about. And that looks like it has ripped. Looks like it's got no after hours action at all. But um, on the one minute chart, it's too ill defined. Let's look. Actually, you know what? Let's see where it's been. Dude, look at that. That is a crazy V shape. 
so it's gone past this resistance right here so the only thing we need to be concerned with is here and now it has settled at this level you see these, I've, I drew these lines before clearly I've been at this stock in the past which I don't really remember it days ago Let's see what it's doing on the five minute okay so what we have okay eighteen fifty look at the retracement on this red bar right here on the one on the five minute chart let's see I'm going to dial down now because we just crossed a, a major resistance right here and there's room to grow up till there and there. Hey, pharmaceuticals is there news? It's a way above the view. Well, that's good actually. I mean, you never know. I'm looking for parabolics at this point. There was an earnings call transcript on the 25th. That was yesterday. This morning, they adjusted it up by $2, according to one. So there, someone's expecting this to go to 26 now, who had expected it to go to 24, and it's at 18.31. Okay, see so now this could become this. It's too much of a move right now though. Okay, this is up on one, two, three candles. This candle's starting right here, four. Mm. I almost feel like I'd like to see it consolidate a bit here, especially when the market is red. I mean, it's above VWAP, that's nice. There's not a lot of volume. There was a lot of volume on this red bar here. This green bar really didn't have much volume but it went from 1802 to 1820 and then it opened the next one minute bar eight cents higher so that was like but there's no volume there was no volume on that at all and volume confirms the move so this is an unconfirmed move into retracement territory after a huge down move towards the VWAP, meaning it could be overextended. We had huge volume this morning when it made its high though. And if it can, I mean, 1850 is also gonna be a sticking point. There's a, there are a lot of potential resistances here, not just cause these highs are here, but these highs are here for a reason because the 50 cent mark means something to a lot of traders. So boom, touches it, goes down. Boom, touches it, can't make it, comes over here, makes a great doji, can't, still can't pass it, goes down. But if it does pass it, we got from 1850 to 1865, it's a 15 cent gain. So that might make sense if we could set up some kind of a, a loss, we'll stop right here. I don't really see that happening. This one I also um, was in on my retirement account. Oh, if I just would have held it, I could have sold so much better. Let's see where we're at. 
See, the market's still going down, but this is going up, and it has established some some levels. We got a bottom here. We have obviously resistance. Oops, let's do this bottom here. That's a that's a double bottom. Seven eighty is a top. Whatever, close enough. So now we have this touching up here. This is the one minute chart. VWAP, we've got half a million in volume at the peaks. I like this green candle. This red doji should have signaled a downturn, but it didn't. It was uh, it I like this if it breaks above 2780 because see a lot of resistance we are taught we are driven on better seeds and yeah I like it above 2780. Let's see what kind of news there is. This would be okay. First, it's the market up or down. The market is down, but it's been on an up a little bit up. This spider, the one minute, five minute. Let's see the one minute. It's on a little bit of an uptick. Wouldn't trade by it though. Okay, 2743. So what happens now is um, this needs to consolidate a bit before I would feel confident trading it. This looks like a good level right here. $2,750. If this crosses 2750 I might anticipate and go long depending on how long it has rested in this area as well as uh, what the volume looks like and what the market is doing I traded this before in my other account and all my lines are way below this level my my top line is around like 24.75. Bisker. Target price is 40 on Foxconn News. So I mean that means something. Look at the market turn green. It's time to enter a buy order to just to get ready for this. So a hundred of these at twenty-seven dollars at twenty-eight bucks a piece, two thousand eight hundred. So uh, four hundred would be ten thousand. Eight hundred would be twenty. Let's do a thousand of these. Far from actually putting this order in. But if it gets to 27.80, if it breaks 27.80, oh, 
Yeah, it's time. I don't think this is going down again. But we will see because it just went down. I want to see this pop above 27.50 again. I was in, I'm in at 27.52 for $160 loss so far. I should have waited for it to retrace a little bit. 25.74 is my loss. Wait, what? stop will be 2716 2714 is what we'll call it this is a huge bet right here this is the kind of stuff that I started this account to stop but I'm in it now and it's Friday and this could be a short squeeze um, Give me a second, I'm going to put this on my other screen. I think I'm going to set a pretty tight stop on this because I risk a lot. Uh, 2724 is going to be mine. Hmm. It's nice when it goes your direction. So at least I have a stop loss here. I'm not going to go broke on this if it goes against me. But so far we're doing good. Okay, when I said if this pops above 2780, the sky's the limit, right? Now I anticipated a little bit. I might have been able to wait. Okay, so now it just popped back below that. Oh, there we go. Hmm. There's nothing to the left. Look at that. There's nothing. Nothing stopping this. Nothing stopping it. So now what I have to do is watch my level two. See when I think it's really going to slow down. Okay, if it hits 28, we're golden. Oh, look. Okay. So now it's going to pause a little bit. Twenty-seven ninety-five is a new top. But that's there's no limit there. The market's still green. The market is, is just going crazy. The market's not pausing. Oh, I stopped out. Okay, with a two hundred eighty dollar loss. Okay, is it? That was a huge sell off. Ugh, that's ugly. Oh my god. Do I get back in? Do I double down? Do I take a breath? Here's where instinct really kicks in. Now this is... I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go take a breath. 
and come back and see where it's at because I, there's no reason to jump in at this very, I mean, that could be like a low. Maybe that stop out was too fast. The worst thing I'm gonna do is be impulsive about that. Maybe
Okay. I'm back with a big ass breakfast burrito. Get a little nourishment. This could turn out to be quite the uh, adventure this afternoon. We've got all these. Could be short squeezes happening. So I like roughly 126 to 134 is a nice gap. In fact, even better. I don't know where I, why I started this. Oh, because on the five minute, there's something there. Let's see what it looks like on the one minute. And that's what, because there's quite a quite a lot at the, on the one minute here and the five minute. So FSR is trying to break. It broke. If it breaks over 27. There's nowhere to go but up. Let's see it consolidate a bit. 
can see it put in a little bit of a range from here to here. So 2795, 2775. I mean, it's too extended. Unless this is the bowl. Um, This is the short squeeze. If this pops above 28, it could really mean something. That's right. There's no limits on this one. Ooh, it made it up to 2809. All right, it's time. But this could go parabolic. I'm just buying it. I'm not chasing. There's no reason for this. Okay, I'm watching the level two on this. We got in at 2809. Every penny we make $10 or lose $10. There's quite the spread on this. However, I'm just gonna watch it. I'm just gonna enjoy the ride. Set my stop at 27.74. I mean, we're not at. Oh, it got hit, of course. We had 50% retracement. I should have known better than to enter, and ch I, I chased it. I was chasing. But there's no reason not to. I need to re enter this. This thing. This is the kind that will.
I'm just gonna write this. It will pop up. It will get above its 2785 sometime this afternoon. Completely destroying the short sellers. See, now it's going to go sideways a bit here, but I'm at 2791, so that's under the $28 mark. I do believe that it's going to end the day above 28, and that's just not just a feeling, but it, the chart pattern shows no resistance anywhere up there. So let's just listen to some music and take a ride. Yeah, 28, 25 is not the high day for this, in my opinion, don't follow me, I'm not an advisor.
Maybe a bit early for me, but I'm sure for many traders, once they've been doing it long enough, you can trust your instincts. So this is going from a severely negative trade to a severely positive trade. Because I look to the left and there's no resistance. There's no reason for this not to keep going up. At least long enough to get my money back. Bottom line, I stopped out too early. I should have set my stop a little lower, clearly. Then I could have been in at a better price and rode this up for better profits. See that top and tail. Not bad volume. We got a bunch of green candles. Might be time to sell and let it sort of re As high as 2841, I think we'll sell at about 2845. It gets up there. Here's the volume. Yeah, I think it's time. Hmm. Did I wait too long? I think I did. Let's see. Can I go back up? I'm watching the level two. Oh, I waited too long. Alright. Let's still catch it. Come on, people. At 2837 still leaves us with a profit. Yes. And we can watch it consolidate and come back and get more. <laughs> or we can sit and watch it just shoot past what we sold at. But eventually it's going to want to consolidate. And at that point we can buy back in if it still looks good. I'm pretty happy with this trade. Anytime you make money instead of lose money, it's a good trade. Anytime you lose the amount of money that you established you would want to lose before you get out of a trade, it's still a winning trade. Ask me why. If this pops above 28.50 right now, it could keep going. Yeah, it could just skyrocket. But I already made my money. I'm gonna watch it. I just want to let it rest a little bit. There's too many green bars. You see this right here? Green one, two, three, four, five, and they went from uh, 27.93 up to 28.46. So there's, there, there has to be, there, but I say has to, this is the stock market, it's never rational, it may not follow common sense. But this is making new highs, it's still in play. When this crosses 28.57 again, its next stop is 29.
like we got out in time. How did we do? Where did we, where, where did we stop? Where did we do this? 2838. We bought it at 2791. 2000. Closed at 2838. And where is it at now? 2837. It made it up. It made it up 20 cents higher. That's our new high. <clears throat> so we made over 35 cents on that move, almost 40 cents per share, for 2,000 shares. So we brought our loss of, what was it, like 600, some crazy amount, up to a profit for the day of 320. And that was without luck, but watching the pattern. Watching what the, what the chart was telling us it was going to do. When you look here, you have really good, I mean, volume, volume up. You filled these guys up. They dropped it. We went. We had a 50% retracement here on this red candle. A little more retracement. We had a green candle, but that just did not fill everybody. Then we had a couple of red candles. That's, I mean, they took out a lot of buyers or a lot of sellers. I mean, and volume, 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 this is it. I do like the way this one came out. So the reason this is all cramped up here is because I do want to keep an eye on the, um, If it can hold that 27, see where that line came from? Way over here. This resistance can't, oh, it just broke that support. That's fine. This, we can buy and sell on this thing like 20 times before it, the market closes. You just gotta watch the patterns. And since we're above the VMA, our odds are on our side when we, when we bet the upside. Let's just chill and watch it a little bit, see what it's doing.
my special guest his name is Max and he is a two-year-old chihuahua say hi Max who's a good boy Max huh? Huh? who's a good boy say hi hello hello hey Max what who's a good boy who's a good boy huh? who's a good boy yeah He's not one of those really barky, loud, noisy chihuahuas, but he is such a cool chihuahua. I might have to post a picture of him at some point, but he's my, my roommate's dog. And uh, once in a while, he'll drop by to come visit me, hang out, see what we're doing. I don't really have snacks for him or anything, so that's why I know he actually likes hanging out with me. And there he goes. Meanwhile, um... SR is doing what I was hoping it would do, consolidating, oh, phew. it's okay, I'm out, I don't have any shares, but will it stop it at this line that I drew way the heck back here, or are any of these lines relevant anymore, we shall find out. Since I wasn't in a trade when this happened, this is this could be a beautiful bottom. Always fix my coffee just the way that I like. And you always answer when I call. What's going on? Even though you're over all see everything's straight. Yep. There's the spider, S P five hundred. We look and that's that. Obviously, and the Russell 2000, all of them turned red. Good. That's just a buying opportunity. See that? Look at that. Let's keep an eye on the rest of the markets in general. This may be a spot to buy at. Now this is half 50% retracement is a buy. That's a buy signal right there. But that would be on volume. There's a lot of volume. The, 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 the sellers definitely got filled. If that pops above 20, yeah, it's time. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it quickly. See, this is where hotkeys come in handy because uh, I can't do this fast enough. Is that 2000? Yes. Okay, what's it at now? 2757, still acceptable. That still hasn't retraced too far. Confirm and send. Yeah, let's do it. That's okay. Because all the sellers got filled here. The buyers have stepped in. saw that coming. You can't go wrong. When you, go, when you look to the left, oh, okay, my, our stop loss might be like, actually our stop loss is 27.25. Actually 27.24 because, um, it hits it 
you just want to get filled with whatever is available you want out so everything is going to stop because that means it's gone wrong and it's not going to go right again oh look at that we're already up 200 oh god 4 540 look at this look at this i i wasn't expecting it to go this fast but this Okay, this can become resistance if it pops above uh, this line right here, which is, what is that, 2790? Okay, beautiful. Our next resistance, possibly 2815, 2820. Unless that was it, you know, we're, I mean, we're good. And we're, we're picking up on volume. We got a lot of sellers at 28. We got so more buyers. We so we're, we're going up still. Days, still going up. Nights. I should flatten this out though. I should be gone. ready to flatten it. I'm, I'm watching over here, but I am ready to pull this trigger because it starts to look like. Get our money. It could keep going, but it could it could stop at twenty eight twenty five. But we're up twelve hundred. Why? They do say you know bag hold to a winner, and that's true. So we got filled at 28.04. So we bought at 27.57, 2,000 shares. We got filled at 28.04. Literally, you can make money in the market. Up, down, and down there. And where was the high of this candle? So we sold five cents. Be right back. Money, 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 money. Kind of makes me want to get some get you on your way. jingles. Gotta let it go, no more left to say. Gotta get you in the deep where the water be, baby. Drown you in the love. Watching where I go, skyline is hazy. I've been waiting on a tree like a dog gone crazy. I might think I'm gonna make it, might think I'm in the know. Extended though. Come on, man. Oh, oh good boy. Who's a good boy? Max, join me again. Watching us make money. Hey, Max. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, she was 
guys in a minute. I'm going to be trading out those. Back short of kicking the ball and watching this. You know that it can get warm. Yeah, buddy, what? Look. FSR Fisker. Yeah, Fisker. Look. Fisker. That's right. Yeah, Fisker. He's kicking some butt, huh? Look at that. That's where we're at right now.
like it was actually going up. Same exact time frame here. AMC, we got the Spider, we got the NASDAQ, and we got the Russell 2000. I think this is following. This follows these. So, we will test my theory. But honestly, I do believe that. Um, how the markets are going down now AMC is going down but we got a good price if it goes below eight I will become concerned in fact I'm, I'm going to set my stop loss just in case I'm going to set it at seven
but it's also, you know, it's at a low. I mean, this is like practically a, a low for the day. at this this is this is turning into a double bottom I like this if this holds it could be very nice for us we can jump okay so here's here's resistance really it's our first resistance once it really starts taking off maybe here but Seriously, be watching. Um, short float, thirty-five percent. I don't know. Is that high? Is that low? I haven't really. I'm not really paying attention. But it seems a little high to me. for the day see now I could have ended the week 1400 up for the day on this stock
<clears throat> Maybe 50 seconds till the end. Now, do I, I don't want to be in this when the market closes because in the paper account, I cannot um, buy or sell pre or after market. If I own this in my regular account, I could, but... Did I do this um, so I can end with a really good week? Look at that. That's what we're looking for. Dollars and above. Once it hits eight. So, oh, I'm stuck in AMC for the rest of the weekend, I believe. Let's see, can I, can I make this happen? Get out of this stock? I don't think I can. I think I'm stuck for the whole weekend. today, I'd say we did okay. We, we really actually did really well. Um, on the day, and we accept AMC. We would take blah blah blah, 2,180 on the day, and that's because of 1,000. of um, AMC. 
even still, over a thousand dollars up. Appreciate you all watching. See you Monday morning, 6 a.m. Thank you so much.